One, two, three. Oh, it's recording now. <laughs> Morning and welcome to our worship today and welcome to those of you who are following us, following us on YouTube this Sunday the 28th of June. We gather together in our Zoom service at the congregation of St. Hints and John's and welcome to any of you who are new to our worship. So we begin. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also, and also with you. With you. So we're going to sing our first hymn. We're going to uh, stay muted while God plays. And we're going to sing God has spoken by his prophets. Sound on. on you, me. The prayer of preparation. Almighty God, God, to whom all hearts are open, all who desire us know, and from whom no secrets are hidden, the thoughts of our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. 
Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We are quiet for a moment while we say sorry for ourselves and then we will say sorry together. Stay together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. Lord, word and deed, in the confidence we keep this error and deliberate we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. Thank you, Lord. 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 Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So let's sing the Gloria to the tune, O oh for Joy. And I think you'll mute us, will you, Shandy? I can't mute you. Maybe Margaret or um, Guy, you need to unmute. So we're going to watch a, a, video, a little video now of the story of St Alban. Shandy, unmute. Christianity was outlawed throughout the entire... 
1,700 years ago, near this place, in a town called Verulamium, lived a man named Alban. As a citizen of the Roman Empire, Alban was required to follow the Roman religion and worship its many gods and goddesses. But Alban had a secret. Unknown to the Romans, Alban was sheltering a Christian priest in his house. At this time, Christianity was outlawed throughout the entire Roman Empire. A citizen could not choose to follow another religion, such as Christianity. If caught, both Alban and the priest would face harsh punishments. But why did Alban risk so much to hide a stranger? What did he have to gain? His motivations remain a mystery. We do know that Alban was so impressed by the priest's devotion and faith that he asked to become a Christian too. However, word soon reached the magistrate of Verulamia. He could not permit the priest to spread Christianity in his city. He ordered soldiers to find and arrest the priest immediately. Thinking quickly, Alban swapped his cloak with the priest. The disguised priest was able to slip out of the city and escape. Named after this type of cloak, to this day that priest is known as Amphibolus. Alban knew the risk he took. The judge was furious that Alban had helped Amphibolus, the priest, to escape. He ordered Alban to renounce his newfound Christian faith at once. Alban responded boldly, I am called Alban, and I worship and adore the true and living God. Alban was condemned to death. Soldiers dragged him outside of the city walls to the top of a great hill. There he was beheaded. Alban became the first known Christian to die for his faith in Britain. Ever since then, millions of people have come to this hillside and to this church, which was built to honor Alban's memory. Today, we celebrate Alban as Britain's first saint. We remember his courage in welcoming a stranger who was being hunted for his beliefs. One ordinary man who did an extraordinary thing. Thanks, Candy. We're going to, Jeff's now going to read to us. Mm, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you reading to us? <laughs> yeah, hold on, where is it gone? Gospel reading is Matthew 10, starting at verse 40. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory, Glory to, to you, to you o Lord. 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 Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Whoever welcomes a righteous man in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of a righteous person. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to the one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. 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 So um, I do pray, Lord, that as I speak these words, you may speak through them, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 When I started theological training, I was not quite sure what I expected. I'd read my Bible cover to cover and had plenty of questions. What I didn't expect and what was drummed into us by our Old Testament and New Testament tutors was how important context was. We'd learned all about the Gospels, who it was, thought, could have written them, theories about who they were written to, and even more theories about why they wrote them in the first place. And all the Gospel writers would have had their stories from somewhere. 
John from first-hand experience or say in Luke's case it was from gathering history from other people who've been there. The people they were writing it to would also have shaped some of the emphasis of their writing, the way they grouped together some of the history and Jesus's sayings. So why is this important? Well context is important in everything that we do and preach and teach. For example, I'm giving thoughts on what Matthew wrote to his church and applying them to a church in Stevenage, which is in the middle of a world pandemic. And even if it doesn't colour what I say, it may affect the way that you hear it, or you may find parts of it more relevant to your context or your situation. And that's okay. For example, Paul says, all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching and so on. So why am I saying this? <clears throat> well Matthew it is believed was writing to a church in Syria quite a distance from Jerusalem and he is spelling out to that church not only the gospel the good news but what it means to be a disciple a follower of Jesus and it may seem vastly removed from where we are but i believe that in this there are things that are helpful for us false prophets were popping up all over the place and the story was beginning to get twisted which was why it was important to get it down in matthew's church all were prophets all were apostles all proclaimers of the good news the 12 disciples were distinct because of their historical ties with Jesus. But in Matthew's church, it is believed there was little or no hierarchy. And the life story of Jesus and his entourage was a blueprint for the church. Well, today's short passage comes at the end of a longer passage where Jesus commands his disciples to go from town to town to preach, preach the gospel. They weren't to wear shoes to take money or a sword for protection. They weren't even allowed a change of clothes. He tells them that they'll be like lambs among wolves. Well, why would he do that? Well, firstly, so that they're not distracted by earthly things. And secondly, and more importantly, so that they learn to be completely reliant on God and his guidance and provision. It's in this context, if you like, that Jesus talked of the lilies of the field and the birds of the air, telling them not to worry, that God will provide for them. And then, in the next breath, however, he warns them that they must expect to be arrested that even their families will betray them, that they will be persecuted. They may also be killed. They are to take up their cross just as Jesus took up his cross in literal terms. But that God will give them the words to say as they proclaim the gospel, even under these circumstances. And Jesus tells them that death, even death. It's not a great marketing strategy. We, I suspect, would be quite happy to put up posters about the birds of the air, the lilies of the field. But I wonder how many people would work, walk through the church doors if we put a poster up saying, come to church. We can offer you a chance for your family to betray you, for you to be persecuted. And yes, you could even die for the cause. I'm not sure it would work. Well, maybe it would. But Jesus points out to his disciples that they need not fear as the final triumph of the evil one, death, is nothing. There's a story about Rabbi Johanan ben Zakkai on his deathbed. His disciples visited him and he was weeping. They asked him why and he answered, if I were being taken today before a human king who is here today and gone tomorrow, whom can I persuade with words 
and bribe with money, even so I would weep. Now that I'm being taken before the Supreme King of Kings, whose anger is an everlasting anger, who, if he puts me to death, puts me to death forever, nay more, when there are two ways before me, one leading to paradise and the other to Gehinnom, the name for hell, and I do not know by which I shall be taken. Shall I not weep? But we know where we are going, that our sins can and have been and will be forgiven because of what Christ has done before us. So, as Jesus said, the greatest fear, that of death, is nothing to us. So knowing all of this, such as the original 12, Paul, etc., went out. If the message wasn't listened to or accepted, they followed God's lead, and they went from town to town, village to village, and if it wasn't heard, they literally shake the dust from their feet. And during the time of Rome, they went to Roman cities and even to this small island. And this is where Amphibolus met St. Alban. Our passage is for those who aren't called to go out, but who are there to respond to accept missionaries into their own homes and their churches. This was a command as important as any, one that St. Alban answered. It said at the beginning of that passage that they don't know why he did what he did, but we do know why he did what he did. He had become a Christian. Not only did he give Amphibolus a cup of water, he played the ultimate promise by hiding him and letting him escape and spread the gospel further. I wonder if he hadn't done this, whether the gospel, how long it would have taken to get to this country. I realise I may seem to have gone off track talking about context, etc. But today's reading comes and sums up a larger passage of what it means to follow God's lead, what mission looks like, and how reliant we must be on God and his provision. I also know that it can be hard, and these days we're expected to be self-supporting, and that there's a stigma to receiving, be it by benefits, universal credit or charity. I know that only too well, as I had to raise my children for a while on benefits. And even today, I find it hard asking charities for help to help me out with my finances. In fact, I've applied today to ask for help to pay for a crown for a broken tooth from a charity. But when we are receiving, we are receiving from God, not just from those around us, and as we give, so we are giving, not just to others out of a sense of charity or to make us feel better, but we give to Christ. Nothing on this earth belongs to us. And as Christians, we have given even our lives to God and to his care. To finish, and I hope to help to illustrate my final point, I'll read a very small story I found from Ron Dale's Pause for Thought. He writes, An old friend of mine was seriously ill in hospital, so I went to visit him. He was very weak, and after greeting him, he whispered that he'd like a drink. Carefully supporting him with one arm, I gently placed a plastic beaker of lime juice to his lips. Then it happened. I was no longer supporting my friend, but Jesus himself. It seemed as if an electric shock went through me. Then suddenly, everything was normal again. I carefully laid my friend's head on the pillow, and he died.
So this rod of ours, we're going to affirm our faith in him. I'm proud to do so. And so do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe, we believe and, and trust, trust in, him. in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We, we believe, believe and trust, trust in him. In him. <clears throat> believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world. We believe, believe and, and trust, trust in, in him. him. This is the faith of the church. This, this is, is our faith. faith. We, we believe, believe and trust, trust in the one God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. 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 I'm going to hand over to Sue for the prayers. Creator God, we pray for your world, for those who are in positions of responsibility. Grant them wisdom in protecting your creations. May we all look after our environment and one another celebrating what we have in common and accepting our differences. We pray especially for those in our world who are suffering, for those who live in poverty, who face persecution, who live in war zones or live with disease. We pray for all the countries living with the pandemic and the effect it has on people's lives. Guide us, Lord, in working together for a better future. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, we pray for those in our church and local community who are returning to their workplaces and children returning to their schools. May they stay safe and feel secure. Be with those who are still shielding and feeling isolated. We pray for those who are leaving their houses for the first time and are feeling afraid or uncertain. Keep them safe, Lord. We pray for all those still working and schooling from home and trying to find the right work-life balance. Lord, give them your strength and guidance. We pray for families and businesses that are struggling financially and who are worried for the future. Give them hope, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our our prayer. Prayer. Lord, healer of all, we pray for those suffering in mind, body or spirit. Comfort them in their suffering, calm their fears and let them experience your healing. Be with the doctors, nurses and specialists who care for them. We pray for those who have died recently. Shine your light upon them and may they rest in your eternal peace. We pray for their friends and families, give them comfort and support from those around them. We pray also for those whose years mind falls this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as you welcome us to be part of your family, offering love to all unconditionally, may we in turn show this love to those around us and welcome them in the name of Jesus. Merciful Father, accept these for the sake of your, of your Son, our Savior, Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, as our Savior taught us, so we pray. Amen. Father in heaven, Amen. hallowed be your name. Your Amen. kingdom come. Amen. Thy will be done, will be done. Uh, as in heaven. Give us our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us our trespasses. 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 Forgive us our
We are the body of Christ. Together with the one spirit. We were all converted into one body. And let us take the sign of peace. Share the sign of peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Dad. Peace be with you. What's the same, is it? Peace to you. Scrolling down, we've done that bit right. Oh, I talked. We have um, a hymn, our next hymn, which is I think, is that right, Chandy? Aren't you doing together but apart? Yes, yes, you're right. Sorry, I've got two uh, two Lord's prayers in here, so I was just a bit confused. There we are, found it. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. We'll say together but apart. In union with the people throughout the world and across, and across the, the ages, ages. we remember other than being together, meditating on your words, words gathers us as your body. Come, Lord Jesus, dwell in us, and in your spirit, that we may be filled with your presence. I see some laughing this time. I needed a neighbor. When I needed it, where were you there? So you probably needs to unmute. <laughs> So we'll pray together. Father of all, 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 we give you thanks and praise that when you were still, still far off, you met us in your son and brought us home. 
Notices. Um, first of all, uh, thank you for everybody who's been giving. Um, if you do have collection, I think post them to Chandy's door. Oh, we, am I still muted? No. So, uh, yes, if you um, do have envelopes or anything, pop them through Chandy's door. Thank you again for everyone who's been giving. There's a meeting for the, with the property group on Tuesday when we'll be thinking about how and when is the right time to reopen the church. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of things to be taken into consideration. And just because the government has said they can be, it doesn't mean that they have to be. So your prayers about this meeting would be appreciated, especially for guidance as to what the best thing to do would be. Um, I think that's all I've got for notices. Um, I can't think of anything else. No, um, obviously they'll probably, I'm sure there will be um, evening prayer on Wednesday as usual. So we're going to continue to the dismissal. Can I just say something, Christine? Yeah, of course. Um, so on Monday, somebody came into church um, and said that they'd watched the service uh, at St Albans and how cross they were that the Bishop of St Albans celebrated communion and they weren't allowed to share. Um, and I did raise that with the Bishop. So if you feel strongly about that, then if you let me know, then I think we could write to the Archbishop of Canterbury and just say how excluding it is to watch a priest celebrate communion and receive it and not to receive it yourselves. But I'm, I'm happy to write on my behalf because I feel strongly about it. But obviously, if the more people that add their names to that letter, the stronger that letter will be. So if you think you feel strongly about that, then let me know um, and I will draft a letter and send it round to you and you can decide whether you want to sign it or not. Um, but I feel quite strongly that we shouldn't celebrate communion until we're all gathered or until we can all do it legally so that one, either me or Christine celebrates communion and you all have a bit of bread and wine at home and share it at the same time. So that's just something for you to think about, really. Yeah, thanks, Candy. Yeah. Yes. And um, I'm just wondering whether, um, I'll just mute this a moment. Mm -hmm. oh, no, I won't. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll just stop the recording a moment. Um, if you'd like to stay and um, have a chat to each other, I can put you in breakout rooms at the end. Thank you, Jelly. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen. Amen. Rest in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Christ. Amen. So for those who'd like to stay,
Uh, you're very welcome. And you're going to go into a breakout room if you want to. If you can't stay and talk to each other, that's fine. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm disappearing because I'm, I'm going over to Hemel for, for the day. Thank sort you. of uh, first time they've invited somebody over there. So uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm off now. Have, Have a lovely, lovely day. day. Have a lovely day. day. Bye. 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 See you all. Bye. Yeah. And unmute yourselves. Bye. No, 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 because I look dreadful. Bye. 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 Uh, just us. <laughs> oh, no. Everybody's gone. Yeah, I'm going, Brian. Well, you're going, Brian. Don't want to talk to us? Uh, no. <laughs> Did you enjoy your banana bread? Yeah, that's very nice. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Go on, then. Get lost. <laughs> Yvonne, you can go in a room if you want. There should be an option to go in a room. I I don't mind staying. I have nothing else to do. I've got all day. No, no, you can go in a breakout room and talk to other people. Okay. You what do I do? Like, Just for join, eh? Yeah. And uh, Rosie, I can't hear you. So, there we go. You can hear me now. I can, so I've unmuted you. And Barbara? She stopped. Would you like to go? I'm 